In this lesson, we will be focusing on the graphs of sine, cosine, and tangent. On this very first slide, you actually see the graphs of sine, cosine, and tangent. And in this lesson, we will be focusing on four things. The first, you will be able to define the amplitude of sine, cosine, and tangent. Second, you will be able to define the period of sine, cosine, and tangent. Third, you'll be able to define the frequency of sine, cosine, and tangent. And lastly, you'll be able to recognize the sine, cosine, and tangent functions by simply looking at a picture of each of the three functions. Now remember, sine, cosine, and tangent go back to our very first lesson in understanding that this, they are simply the ratios of the differences between the sides. The sine is the ratio between the opposite side and the hypotenuse. The cosine, again, is the relationship between your adjacent side and the hypotenuse. And the tangent is the relation between the opposite side and the adjacent side. For us to have an understanding of each of these three different trig functions, we need to understand a little bit of terminology. The first key piece is what they call the amplitude. And the amplitude is simply your distance from the minimum value of your function to the maximum. And it's calculated by multiplying the difference between the maximum and the minimum by one half. So in this particular picture right here, our maximum value is at one and our minimum value is at negative one. So by subtracting the difference between the max and the min, we get basically how high and how low the graph goes on our particular function. And in this case, one minus negative one is 2. And by multiplying that by 1 half, your amplitude is 1. So it is simply the value that is calculated by multiplying the maximum minus the minimum by 1 half. And that gives you your amplitude. The second key piece to understanding with a trigonometry graphs is that of the period. And the period of a function is what they call the horizontal length of one complete cycle. Or the difference, or how long it takes, excuse me, the difference between going from one peak to the next peak, or one valley to the next valley. As you'll see today, a lot of the functions we're dealing with will have either a period of 2 pi or 1 pi. In this particular graph, our period is 2 pi because the graph goes up to 1, down to negative 1, and repeats that process again after traveling 2 pi along the x-axis. So the period again is the horizontal length of one complete cycle of our trigonomic function. And the last key piece is that of the frequency. And the frequency is simply the number of cycles it completes in a given interval. And it's calculated as 1 divided by your period. So in most cases, you're going to notice that the frequency is just dependent about how much of the graph you're actually seeing, particularly graph. So let's now focus on our three main feature, our three main trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent. And here's our first one, the graph of sine. You'll notice that sine always starts at a value of x is equal to 0. It'll go all the way up to its high point then down to its low point and back to zero. And that represents one complete cycle of sine. So looking back at our terminology, we're looking at the amplitude and the period. Your amplitude, again, is how high and how low your graph goes based on where it started. So the graph goes up to one and down to negative one. So again, to calculate the amplitude, it's the difference between your maximum and your minimum. 1 minus negative 1, which is 2, multiplied by a half, which gives you an amplitude of 1. And the period, again, is the whole length it takes to go from the beginning back to the repeating part of the cycle. So it goes up and goes down and starts over again at 2 pi. So sine has an amplitude of 1 and a period of 2 pi. The key thing to note, remember, sine always starts when x is equal to 0. Now compare that to cosine. Cosine and sine look identical except for the starting location. In this case, the graph of cosine of x starts at its highest point, which in this case is 1. 
but it goes down to negative 1, comes back up, and again, it has the same amplitude and period of sine. The amplitude is 1, and the period is 2 pi. But again, notice, the big difference is that cosine will always start at its highest point, and then start the process. That's the only easy way you'll be able to differentiate between sine and cosine, is that starting location, as the amplitude and the period are both identical. Tangent's a little bit different. Tangent has no amplitude because its graph goes on forever in the y direction. There's no way that you're ever going to find that, that particular value. So the amplitude does not exist. But the period does exist. As the graph will kind of start at one point and will go to the next part after every pi values on the x-axis. So for tangent, your amplitude, there is none and the period is pi. And you'll always be able to recognize tangent by kind of this little curved shape. It goes forever in both directions in the y-axis and kind of fluctuates a little bit in between. So in summary, sine and cosine both have the same amplitude and period and the same frequency. And same have an amplitude of 1 and a period of 2 pi. Biggest difference again, though, is the starting locations. In sine, it starts at zero. Cosine always starts at its highest value. In tangent, has no amplitude and has a period of one pi instead of two. This is going to serve as a great introduction to understanding what the sine, the cosine, and the tangent functions are. And this concludes our lesson about the graphs of sine, cosine, and tangent.